of stages move you to the podium where Dr. Gideon Wong, second of advisor and spokesperson for the Vice President of the Republic, who is anchoring this program, has just introduced the Minister for Information, Kujo Ponkruma, MP for Fazer. Let me take you there now for a commencement of the program. Let's hear it. A big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen as we welcome up on stage here at the David Acha and Linda Cornfield Courtyard, the President of Ashesi University and His Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Mr. Patrick Ewa and Dr. Mahamudu Baumea. for the president and the vice president one more time ladies and gentlemen okay thank you very much ladies and gentlemen we'll yield the podium to our host the president of Ashes university patrick we're in your hands Good evening, Your Excellency, Vice President of Ghana, Your Excellencies, members of the Diplomatic Corps, Honorable Ministers, Nananum, distinguished guests, and the Ashesi community, I want to wish you a very warm welcome to our campus. We're really thrilled to have His Excellency here with us this evening to talk about digital transformation uh, in Ghana. I thought I'd spend just a few minutes to uh, introduce the Vice President, and what we want to do this evening is to just have a conversation about the future of our country, especially around digitization. Um, so it's going to be a lot of just a fireside chat, but we've asked the Vice President to first share his vision for uh, digital transformation in our country. Um, and then we will sit together, I'll ask him a few questions, and then open up to questions from, from the audience, and we will prioritize students for the, for the Q&A. So, uh, in introducing the Vice President, we all know who he is, and um, you, can, you can search the web and find his, his biography. Um, so I'm not going to go through the details of that, but just share a few key points um, uh, from the Vice President president's biography. He was born in Tamale and was educated through secondary school here, and then traveled to the United Kingdom and Canada for his education. Got a uh, bachelor's, master's, and PhD in, in economics. Taught um, in the United States for a few years, and then importantly returned home to help with development. Um, and I think this is a very important message for our students, for our alumni, I know some of you are out there uh, in Europe and the U.S. who are joining us this evening online. Come back home at some point, just like the vice president did. And when he returned, he went to work at the Bank of Ghana, started as a, as a senior economist, um, and then within six years was a deputy governor of the Bank of Ghana, which is an astonishing accomplishment for such a, a short period. He was named uh, the running mate uh, to Nano Adodankwa Akufuado, uh, current president of Ghana. Um, the vice president was his running mate 
in 2008. He was only 45 years old, relatively young. Um, and it speaks to, you know, when you really execute a certain way and you're recognized for the contributions you're making to your society, the things that can happen. Um, lost that first election and went on to do a number of activities all around the world, um, here on the continent, um, in the UK. He served um, in capacities advising in Sierra Leone and Zimbabwe. Uh, and he was also a, a university professor, a visiting professor at Central University here in Ghana. In 2017, Vice President Baumia was sworn in as the seventh Vice President of Ghana under the Fourth Republic. Um, and in that capacity, really oversaw the rollout of you know, the most advanced mobile money interoperability system um, on the continent, oversaw the world's largest medical drone system, a paperless system at our ports, was sworn in again as vice president uh, earlier this year, and continues to be a tremendous champion for a digital economy. And it's really very remarkable to see someone at the highest levels of government really promote digital technology. Um, and I have watched with quite a bit of admiration. And Mr. Vice President, as you know, I returned from a career um, in the US at Microsoft um, to Ghana. And one of the things that really struck me while I was there was I was in the company for eight years. And within that period, I joined the company when I was at number 3,000 and something employee. By the time I left, it was 30,000 people. But the annual revenues of Microsoft had grown larger than the GDP of Ghana. And it was a really remarkable thing for me as a young person to see happen. And I felt that you know, digital technology and that transformation in technology had great potential. And the work that I'm doing here with the Shesi University is educating that, with my team, educating a, a new generation that's going to really drive that transformation. And so we're absolutely thrilled to have you here, um, especially given your, um, your focus in this area. Um, and um, on that note, I'd like to invite you to come share with us a little bit your vision, and then we'll just sit down and have a conversation. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Patrick, for those kind words. The founder and president of the Sheshi University, Patrick Awia, ministers of state, members of parliament, I've seen my own chief of staff, <laughs> Prima, I can say also Prima Opari, senior minister or senior presidential advisor, governor of the Bank of Ghana, deputy governor, members of the diplomatic corps, deans and faculty and staff of Ashesi University, distinguished invited guests, listeners and viewers from across the country and abroad, Students, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much for the opportunity to speak at Ashesi University this evening. This is one of the leading and most sought after universities in Africa. This is a world class university. Congratulations to the founder. Congratulations to the founder Pat, the, and president, President Patrick Uwa, and to the faculty and staff and students for such an accomplishment in under two decades. Today, I'll be speaking about our economy. Notwithstanding the devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the global economy, with increasing prices, declining government revenues, increasing debt levels, 
and so on, we have achieved so much over the past five years. This includes creating more jobs in our first term than any other first term government since 1992, reducing inflation from 15% to near single digits, achieving the lowest exchange rate depreciation for any first term government since 1992. We've recorded positive trade balances in four successive years. This is the best in more than a decade. We have the lowest average bank lending rate since 1992, thanks to the Bank of Ghana. We're safeguarding food security and the fight against hunger through planting for food and jobs. And we're stimulating industrialization from the ground up through one district, one factory. In fact, we have more factories have been set up under our government than under any other government since independence. In addition to these indicators of the macroeconomy, we have established development authorities, we have one constituency, one ambulance, the Zongo Development Fund, and we've managed the COVID-19 pandemic by world-class standards. We've also introduced free TVET and free SHS, and much more. There is a lot to say about these, but tonight I want to focus my remarks on how we are transforming Ghana's economy through digitalization, because it is important that we highlight the critical nature of digitalizing the economy and how it underpins the reforms that the citizenry expects of government. We can only build a vibrant modern nation if we have strong systems and institutions. Otherwise, we will be stuck in a vicious cycle of rhetoric and underdevelopment. Under the leadership of President Nanado Dankwa Kufuadu, we have focused on pursuing digitalization as part of our economic strategy. As part because the fourth industrial revolution is upon us and we must be part of the modern world. Also, there is a growing body of empirical evidence that illustrates the capacity of digital technology to create jobs, significantly boost productivity, increase income, and support wealth creation. For example, the World Economic Forum's Global Information Report estimates that an increase of 10% in a country's digitalization score fuels 0.75% growth in GDP per capita. It is therefore clear that going forward, countries that fail to digitalize their economies are likely to be uncompetitive in the emerging global digital revolution. Therefore, when we assumed office in 2017, we asked the following questions. How prepared is Ghana to compete in the emerging global digital revolution? Have we got in place the key pillars that would enable our economy to participate in the emerging digital revolution? Is the system we have fit for purpose? Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing to note in talking about the digital revolution is that it is a data revolution. The Economist magazine in 2017 put it this way, and I quote, the world's most valuable resource is no longer oil, but data, end quote. Data is as important in this fourth industrial revolution as oil discoveries were for countries decades ago. Data is the basic requirement for participation in the emerging digital revolution. But it was clear when we assumed office that the system 
underpinning the operation of Ghana's economy was not designed for a data-driven economy. The system had major shortcomings and presented challenges for digitalization of the economy. The key enablers for digitalization were not in place. And these challenges included the citizens and residents could not be uniquely identified. It is possible to be born in Ghana, to live a full life, to die and be buried, and there would be no trace of you on any documentation that you ever lived and died in this country. There is also, as we looked at it, the inefficiency and corruption in the delivery of public services. In the day-to-day -day interactions of Ghanaians, whether in applying for driver's license, passports, and any other form of government permit or license at the local or national level, corruption has been so ingrained that bribe taking and giving are often tolerated to the point of being considered as normal behavior. We also had a lack of a functional national property address system. And you know that no modern economy can function without an address system. There was the existence of the large informal sector and the dominance of cash in payments. We also had financial exclusion and so many people not being able to have access to financial accounts and services. Our government databases are largely manual and not integrated. And there was the difficulty in this large informal economy of ours of collecting taxes for development. The vast majority of the population do not file to pay taxes. And when they do not file to pay taxes, there's no way of finding out because you don't have the data. We also had a lot of inefficiency in the delivery of health and education services. All the challenges I have just described so far are symptomatic of a disconnect between the government machinery on the one hand and the lives of ordinary people on the other. The system frustrates rather than helps ordinary people. That is how the system worked. The question to ask, ladies and gentlemen, is why is it that after over 60 years of independence in Ghana, after all the years of IMF and World Bank programs, the, all the foreign aid, all the development assistance, the system remained basically the same, or in some cases, got worse. In 2010, that's 11 years ago, and some seven years before we came into government, I addressed this question in the conclusions of a book that I published on monetary policy and financial sector reform in Africa. I noted in this book that international development is a competitive game. But unlike the football game of football, where the rules are clearly defined for all participants, not all the rules of international development are written down. Putting in place a unique identification number for the population, a unique address system, and financial inclusion are just some of the key and written rules for efficient economic development. The focus, ladies and gentlemen, of economic management by successive governments in Ghana has been on crisis management. As a result of factors such as the collapse historically of commodity prices, increase in oil prices, debt unsustainability, political instability, macroeconomic instability, and so on. We have focused on crisis management. Governments, by and large, have not focused on the underlying system 
that underpins economic activities. I therefore concluded in the book that digitalization was the path to modernizing and transforming Ghanaian, the Ghanaian economy and African economies in general. The goal upon assumption of office was to quickly transform our economy by leveraging on the technological innovations as a means to leapfrog the development process, overcome the legacy problems, and improve both economic and public sector governance. This is why digitalization has been a major focus of the Nana Adudankwa Akufuado government. Unfortunately, many people still do not appreciate the link between digitalization and economic development. I've heard some people even ask why I have abandoned economics for digitalization. <laughs> Far from abandoning economics, the reality is that in this era of the fourth industrial revolution, if you don't digitalize your economy, you will not have much of an economy left, period. A few days ago, the World Bank president, David Malpass, at the recently concluded G20 summit, stated, and I quote, without digitalization, we won't be able to reap the full benefits of human progress. This is the World Bank president, that without digitalization, we will not be able to reap the full benefits of human progress. This statement is a validation of why Ghana has rightly focused on digitalization in the last five years. Ghana has actually been ahead of the curve on digitalization. Our strategy since 2017 has been to build a new system through digital transformation. What are the elements of this new system for digital transformation? We set out under the direction of the president, Nanado Dankwa Kufuado, we set out to build a system with unique identification numbers for the population, a system with addresses for all properties and locations, a system that is transparent and promotes accountability, a system that is inclusive, a system that pro provides efficient public services, delivery, and tackles corruption. A system that improves efficiency in the health and education sectors. And a system that provides financial inclusion in the cash light economy. Finally, a system that enhances domestic revenue mobilization or tax collection. I will now come to how we have used digitalization to solve these problems because the task we set ourselves to build this new system was a quite heavy task. And we opted for digitalization as the instrument or the tool to pursue the building of this new system. So how is digitalization addressing the issue of a unique identity for the population. On coming into office, we quickly moved with the issuance of the biometric national ID, ID cards, the Ghana card to the population. The Ghana card project was initiated by President Kufour, but was practically abandoned for eight years. We revived the process so far. 15.7 million people have been enrolled on the Ghana card by the NIA, and most of them will be enrolled, most of the population will be enrolled by next year. With the Ghana card, the identity of people, even dead people, can be established using their fingerprints. Ghanaian and other embassies abroad will be able to establish the 
identity of Ghanaians using fingerprints. Identity can be established even without the Ghana card. As long as you are enrolled on the database and you, you, you put your fingers on the application, you can be uh, verified. It is not widely known, ladies and gentlemen, that the Ghana card is also an e-passport that contains biometric information that can be used to authenticate the identity of travelers. The government, since this year, has been working with the International Civil Aviation Authority organization, ICAO, to globally activate the e-passport function of the Ghana card. And I'm happy to announce I am happy to announce that on 13th October this year, the Ghana officially became the 79th in member of the International Civil Aviation Organization Public Key Directory com Community. Ghana's country signing certificate authority would therefore soon be imported into the PKD system through what is known as a key ceremony. The key ceremony for Ghana will be held at ICAO headquarters in Montreal before the end of the first quarter of 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, what does the, all this mean? This means that by the end of the first quarter next year, the Ghana card will be recognized globally as an e-passport and can be read and verified in all ICAO compliant borders. That is 197 countries, 44,000 airports in the world. When this happens, holders of the Ghana card will be allowed to board any flight to Ghana. Furthermore, the good news for diasporan Ghanaians is that when the Ghana immigration uh, service is linked to the NIA architecture, and that will be soon. Diasporan Guyanians who hold the Ghana card should not have to obtain visas to return to Ghana. And the Ghana card project, we're quite proud to say, was implemented by the, by the NIA and a local Ghanaian company. It's a world-class company, and we are, this is Margins, IMS, and we are proud of them. Secondly, how is digitalization solving the problem of a property address system for Ghana? Ladies and gentlemen, the absence of, a, of an address system in Ghana has resulted in an address system based on landmarks. And this is not only in Ghana, it's in many African countries. You are seeing on the screen a cartoon that was sent to me by a friend from South Africa. I think that was yesterday. They were doing some voting for municipal elections. And he was a bit frustrated with the uh, issues of finding places. So this cartoon, this is from South Africa, says they're directing this woman to a voting station. It says, pass the disused clinic, go around the best pipe, cross the potholes, left at the crack house, right at open toilets, you can't miss it. <laughs> so, so this is the, the direction by address system by landmarks. Uh, okay, in Ghana, we, 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 we will see past the Coco Cellar, the Blue House, you know, uh, the, the Yellow House to the right and whatever. But it's, it's the same landmark address system. To solve this problem of a lack of a working address system in Ghana, we have leveraged on GPS technology to implement a digital address system for Ghana, capturing every square inch of land in Ghana. In the process, the Land Use and Spatial Planning Authority, LUSPA, has identified 7.5 million properties in Ghana across the villages, towns, and cities. 7.5 million properties. And we have provided all these with street names 
house numbers and digital addresses. And right now we are in the process, LUSPA is in the process, process of affixing the uh, address plates to all these properties. It's ongoing. It's, it's a major uh, achievement for Ghana. We engaged with Google last year, with, we engaged Google last year with a request to integrate our digital address system into Google Maps. I know all of you students, when you go to look for a location, you immediately go on WhatsApp and, 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 and get to Google Maps and forward it and so on. We said to Google that we wanted to integrate our digital address system into Google Maps. They did their due diligence, and this year they agreed for us to do so. So we will do so by the end of the year. So when you enter, once it is done and you enter and put the address of any uh, uh, property or the digital address, Google Maps will take you there. The digital address system, again, was executed by LUSPA, the Ghana Post, and in collaboration with a local Ghanaian IT firm. How is digitalization addressing financial inclusion and the dominance of cash payments? One of the biggest problems that was impeding financial sector development in Ghana is the issue of financial exclusion. This means that most of the population is excluded from fully participating in the financial system because they are unable to open and operate bank and financial services accounts. And this reinforces the dominance of cash payments. When we assumed office in 2017, we decided to use digitalization to solve this problem. The data showed that about 70% of people in Ghana had no bank accounts, but about 80% of the population adult population had mobile phones, and they had 30 million mobile money accounts. It was also not possible at that time to send money to customers of different mobile money service providers. So we asked the following questions. Why can't we make it possible to send mobile money across the different mobile money service providers? And also, why can't mobile money, the, the mobile money account function just like a bank account by making it interoperable with bank accounts? The answer to this, these questions was the implementation of the groundbreaking mobile money interoperability system by the Bank of Ghana and the Ghana Interbank Payment and Settlements Services. Mobile money interoperability has made it possible to transfer money seamlessly between different service providers and also between a bank account and a mobile wallet. And because the mobile money account performs just like a bank account, as a result of mobile money interoperability, we have practically solved the problem of financial exclusion in Ghana. I should note that Ghana is the first country in Africa and one of the few in the world to achieve this type of interoperability between bank accounts and mobile wallets. Even in the U United States of America, the Federal Reserve Bank does not have, inter does not have interoperability in its real-time payments network. The American Bankers Association, in a letter to the Federal Reserve in September 2021, called on the Fed to strive towards interoperability with the real-time payment network. Therefore, achieving mobile money interoperability in Ghana is no small feat, especially at the cost we did it. The data shows that because of mobile money interoperability, Ghana is also the fastest growing mobile money market in Africa. Banks are also responding to the competition for the unbanked from the mobile money service providers. Next month, all banks in Ghana will launch the bank-wide mobile money wallet, which will be available to customers and non-customers through a mobile app. It is similar to 
to other mobile apps from Vodafone, Airtel, Tigo, or MTN. The users of the app will be able to move money from any bank or mobile money account into this wallet. I bring a healthy amount of competition between the mobile money service providers and the banks for the mobile money business. Ladies and gentlemen, today, the payment system reforms we have put in place as a country has made it very easy to open a traditional bank account. For many banks now, in, anyone can open a bank account remotely through their mobile money, their mo mobile phones, without even visiting the branch or filling out forms. Clients need only a valid national ID card and no documentation. You dial a USS code, put in your national ID card number, and pronto, a bank account is open for you. This is progress. As stated, in the informal sector, which is dominated by cash payments, most, money, most merchants are reluctant to accept other forms of payment for reasons of cost and convenience. To address these challenges, the Bank of Ghana and the Ghana Interbank Payment and Settlement Services recently rolled out a universal QR code that allows all merchants and service providers as well as individuals to receive payments instantly on their mobile phones. As customers can just scan the QR code or dial a USSD for those who have YAM phones. The universal QR code is very conducive for merchants because all they need is the mobile phone. They don't need a point of sale device and when payment is made, it goes into their Momo or their bank account instantly, and they will receive an alert instantly. While QR code payments across the world, while QR code payments exist across the world, universal QR code systems, where the, all the banks, all the mobile companies, all the fintechs are on one platform with interoperability between mobile money accounts and bank accounts is a rare, rarity. We don't really have many of such examples. Ghana, again, is the first in Africa to implement such a universal QR code payment system. To deepen the digitalization process, the Bank of Ghana has started the process to launch a central bank digital currency the ECD next year. The ECD is simply a digital form of the physical CD in circulation. It is legal tender issued and backed by the central bank. It is not a cryptocurrency. With the digital currency, citizens will hold currency in the form of a digital wallet. And when the ECD is fully adopted, and I am sure uh, with the governor and his team in place, uh, it will, they will work to have it fully adopted in the next few years. When it is fully adopted, ladies and gentlemen, the incidence of fake or counterfeit currencies and bullion van robberies will be a thing of the past. The, just imagine this country in a, just a few years. Ghana is the frontier, is at the frontier of payment systems development. There's no doubt about that. Ghana is at the frontier of payment system development. Thanks to the hard work of the Bank of Ghana and all stakeholders, I can confidently say that today, Ghana has one of the most advanced and most inclusive payment system architectures in Africa. No doubt about that. The digital payments infrastructure is boosting e-commerce in Ghana. Businesses are booming over Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and so on. And many people who cannot afford to rent or build shops are able to do business on the internet at little cost with deliveries held by the digital address system and payments made using mobile money interoperability. Ladies and gentlemen, how 
is digitalization addressing the issue of efficient public service delivery and corruption. Our approach to improving the delivery of public services is to minimize human contact as much as possible. Therefore, we embarked on an aggressive digitalization of the process of pub service delivery across public institutions with coordination uh, from my office. The, look at the passport office. We, we went to the passport office. Digitalization of the passport office um, was done. Before 2017, applications for passports required that the applicant complete a paper form in pen and submit it to the passport office either personally or upload it online in PDF format to begin the process. It was therefore still a manual process. Following digitalization, passport applications are now online and there's no need for middlemen or guru boys or for the payment of bribes to obtain a passport. The average turnaround time for the acquisition of passports has been significantly reduced and today you can apply for your passport at home on your mobile phone and it can also be delivered to you at home using a courier to your, using the digital address that you have given. This is a marked difference from what used to be the case. Then we went for digitalization at the ports. Previously, the bureaucracy in clearing of goods at Ghana's ports involved a lot of paperwork and used to be largely manual. This caused delays, corruption inefficiencies, frustration, and loss of revenue to government. Many citizens who had cleared goods at the country's port had horror stories about their experiences at the port. The introduction of a paperless system, which we did after 2017, has reduced the layers and simplified the process. It has reduced the time needed to clear goods and the avenues for corruption and increased inefficiencies and revenue mobilization. We went then to digitalize the Drivers and Vehicle Licensing Authority. The DVLA offers two traditional services, driver licensing and vehicle registr registration. These services have been fully digitized. With digitalization of the driver's license in 2019, the DVLA experienced an increase in service by 109%. So you see that a lot of people were applying online and getting their licenses. With digitalization, there are no middlemen or Goro boys, or there, there's no need for bribes to be paid to obtain a driver's license or register a vehicle. Due to the digitalization, a client no longer waits for several months to receive his or her license, but now they can get their license in one day once all the requirements are met. Ladies and gentlemen, we then move on to the motor insurance database. The National Insurance Commission has also implemented the motor insurance database. The objective of the introduction of the motor insurance database is to curb the menace of vehicles with fake motor insurance stickers plying our roads, thus endangering the lives and property. With digitalization of motor insurance in Ghana, all insurance policies which now have key security features have been synchronized to a national database which can be accessed simply with a mobile phone by the insured, the police, and the general public. Members of the public can also self-check the authenticity of their insurance policy. All you have to do is dial star 920 star 57 hash and follow the instructions. And thereafter, you will know the insurance status of the vehicle. So if you're about to board a vehicle and you want to check, you dial. Star 920, star 
57 hash and put in the vehicle uh, 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 the license plate and it will tell you whether this vehicle has insurance or not so that you can make your decision. Then we moved on again the motor insurance database I believe I don't know of any other African country that has put together this motor insurance database. Ghana is the first to do so. Then we move on to digitalize the births and deaths registry. Easily one of the most depressing visits I have paid to a government office during my time as vice president was to the births and deaths registry headquarters. There are hardworking people there, but there clearly was insufficient investment in the institution. It was messy, it was chaotic, and it was sad. It turned out, after we, we engaged the Birth and Death Registry, that they had three separate databases for Birth and Death Registers, and none of these three separate databases were talking to each other. They were sitting in silos. It is therefore not surprising that corruption and fake birth certificates thrived in this environment. Thankfully, the process of digitalization of records at the Births and Deaths Registry is almost complete, and the three databases have been merged into one database and cleaned up. Furthermore, we are integrating the births and deaths register with the databases of the Ghana Health Service, the National Identification Authority, the Ghana Statistical Service, Immigration, and the police, so that the record of births and deaths should be consistent across all these organizations. Starting next year, ladies and gentlemen, every newborn child will within, because we are linking the births and deaths with the NIA and the Ghana Health Service. Every newborn child will within a month be issued with a national ID number. And so when you are issued at birth, you will have your national ID number and that will be your number until death. But you can only be issued a, biometric, a card when your biometrics are fully formed. That is after you are six years old and, and going. Then you will get a card. But for now, you will have a paper card to give you your national ID number, which you will use all the way um, in life. We also moved to, and I'd like to thank the Ghana Statistical Service for, for, for providing 13,000 tablets to the Ghana Health Service to use for this exercise. In, we then moved to digitalize the scholarship secretariat. In the past, candidates applying for scholarships usually had to travel from all parts of Ghana to Accra to take part in the application process. This caused a great deal of inconvenience for applicants seeking government sponsorships. The manual processes of scholar, the scholarship secretariat in an inefficient administration of scholarships in the country. With digitalization of the scholarship secretariat, candidates can now apply for scholarships from the comfort of their homes, take an aptitude test, and be interviewed in their own districts. Then we moved on to implement the Ghana.gov platform. To make it easy to access government services, government has also launched the Ghana.gov portal, which is a one-stop shop for accessing government services. All government institutions are expected to be on the Ghana.gov platform by the end of this year, all government institutions. This means that you should be able to apply for and obtain any government service online through the Ghana.gov platform. The mobile Ghana.gov app is now available on Google Play Store and Apple App Store. So I encourage everybody because you will find this very useful in dealing with all government institutions. Everybody on their mind should download the Ghana.gov app. This is going to be your interface with government. If you don't have a smartphone, you can still interface with government on your YAM phone through the USSD. 
So nobody will be left out. With the Ghana.gov platform, all payments to government on the platform will go directly into government accounts. It also provides a feature, a feedback feature, to enable users to report problems with public services to the relevant authorities. Again, the Ghana.gov platform, when we decided to put it together, was implemented by the Ghana Revenue Authority, again in collaboration with a consortium of Ghanaian IT firms. Just fantastic group of firms that have put this platform together. It's a world-class platform. How is digitalization addressing the issue of domestic revenue mobilization? This has been a headache. Ghana has a major challenge in the area of domestic mo revenue mobilization. The tax to GDP ratio is 14.3%. Compared, that is in Ghana, our tax to GDP ratio is 14.3%. In South Africa, is 27%. And in the OECD or the advanced economies, is 34%. So, so most adults in Ghana are outside the tax net. And compliance is very low. At the beginning of 2017, only 4% of the adult population had tax identification numbers, only 4%. So broadening the tax net is very imperative. In this regard, a number of digital initiatives have been implemented to broaden the tax base and to increase and to create a vehicle for domestic revenue mobilization. To increase the number of people with tax identification numbers, we took the decision to designate the Ghana card number as the tax identification number. So immediately you get a Ghana card, your number is also your tax identification number. In doing this, we increased the percentage of adults with tax identification numbers from 4% to 86% in one go. And this is only going to get higher by the end of next year. So at the end of the year, we can tell who has filed their taxes and who has not filed their taxes. We can also tell where those who haven't filed their taxes live because we have your digital addresses. <laughs> then we look for, because one of the big challenges is the process of filing taxes. So we wanted to digitalize the tax filing process. Many people, including highly educated people, find the process of filing taxes complex. To make it easier and less cumbersome to file taxes, I challenged the GRA last year to come up with a very simple to use mobile application so enable ordinary people to file and pay taxes using their mobile phones. And I am happy to announce that the GRA has completed the mobile app for the filing of taxes. The mobile tax filing application is available on the Ghana.gov mobile app, which is, I said, is available on Google Play Store as well as the Apple App Store. The tax filing mobile app has been designed specifically to make the filing of taxes simple. Once you sign in, you will be asked a number of simple questions. You even think you are filing taxes. You will be asked just a number of simple questions, and you will answer those questions. And once you finish answering the questions, you can press the send button and then it will go and come back with a calculation of the tax that you owe or the refund that is due you. Right on your mobile phone. And once you know what your tax liability is, you can proceed to pay using mobile money, the QR code, Ghana link, or whatever other source uh, that you have available there. You will receive, after payment, an electronic receipt of your tax payment. And you can also apply for and obtain an electronic tax clearance certificate. So we are really digitizing the process of domestic revenue mobilization. Ladies and gentlemen, then we looked at 
the property tax issue and how we can digitalize the collection of property taxes. Most property owners in Ghana do not pay property taxes. Many do not even receive bills to pay taxes. Tax is paid on only 9% of properties in Ghana. And some people who also collect taxes pocket the money. This is because we lack the key elements to implement and monitor an effective property tax regime. An effective property tax regime requires that we are able to identify all properties, assess the value of all properties, identify and maintain a property owner's rate database, send property tax bills to the owners, and enforce the payment of taxes. Thanks to the implementation of the national ID, the national digital property address system, the mobile money interoperability, and Ghana.gov projects, Ghana now has the infrastructure to implement a property tax system. We have been working on this over the last two years, and thanks to the hard work of the ministers for local government and rural development, as well as the, ministers for land, the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, with, the minister, with support from the Minister of Finance and the Lands Commission, we have finally developed a national common platform for property tax administration for Ghana, which will operate across all the MMDAs in Ghana. The platform is integrated, as I said, with the NIA database, the digital property address system, and the Ghana.gov platform. Homeowners will be able to receive their property tax bills, pay their taxes, and receive receipts on their mobile phone, their phones. The platform is ready and is expected to be implemented by the Ministry of Local Government in 2022. Digitalization, ladies and gentlemen, has therefore helped government for the first time to put in place a robust and broad-based vehicle for domestic tax collection. And this has eluded us since independence. We now turn to the issue of improving healthcare delivery and how has digitalization helped us in this area. Before government commenced its systematic digitalization of medical records at the public health facilities, all records, as you can see, uh, this is an example um, of medical records in a hospital. All records and documents were paper-based. The process of locating patient files was cumbersome, and documents sometimes were misplaced or misfiled. This caused delays and inefficiencies in the delivery of health services and the reluctance of some sick people to visit public health facilities. We have embarked on the connection of health facilities under the Ghana Health Service on to one digital platform. So far, all teaching hospitals and all regional hospitals have been connected and can talk to each other. 36 health facilities in the central region have also been connected to the digital platform. The process for other hospitals is ongoing and we expect the process to be completed by next year. So now, if you are referred from a hospital like Tamale Teaching Hospital to Kolebu Teaching Hospital in Accra, you do not need to carry your folder from Tamale to Accra. All your records will be seen and monitored by the doctor in Kolebu when you arrive. Patients will just have one digital folder wherever they go, whichever hospital they go, and they, nobody can tell you your folder is missing. This effort has increased efficiency, effectiveness, and productivity in service delivery by our health facilities, eliminating the need for the queues and delays, and also increasing access to health care by those who need it most. Ladies and gentlemen, digitizing the operations of the National Health Insurance Authority has also helped reduce fraudulent claims. And the renewal of all national health insurance registrations used to take place 
at various national health insurance authority district offices. People had to go and queue at their offices to renew their national health insurance registrations. And this took days for many people in the districts. They used to come and sleep outside these offices just to renew their national health insurance registrations. These delays hampered the operations and limited the revenue streams of the NHIA. But following digitization, Renewal of health insurance registration now is via mobile phone. And all you need to do is dial star 929 hash and you'll get in there, pay your registration and renewal is in instantly done for you. This has led to an increase in renewals by 70% while new registrations have also increased by 41% per annum. Ladies and gentlemen, hospitals and clinics in remote and largely rural communities have difficulty in getting medical supplies, especially in times of emergencies involving, for example, snake bites, childbirth, blood supplies, floods, and so on. Many lives in our rural and remote communities are needlessly lost because people are unable to access critically needed medical supplies on time. To address this problem, Ghana opted to partner Zipline, the world's largest automated on-demand delivery service for medical supplies. Ghana was the second country in Africa, after Rwanda, to implement the delivery of medical supplies through drones. There are four zipline distribution centers currently in Omenako, Mpanya, Vopsi, Sefiwioso. And these four centers deliver about, on average, they do 100 flights a day. This December, we will add two more centers at Enum in the eastern region to cover all of the Afram Plains and 90% of the Volta region. And then we'll add a center in Ketikrachi, which will cover OT region and three districts in Bono East and Northeast Gonja district of Savannah. The next two drone centers will be in Funsi in the Upper West region and Kintampo in the Bono e region in 2022. And this will bring zipline drone coverage to virtually all of Ghana by the end of 2022. I should add that Ghana, Ghana, our country, Ghana, has the largest medical drone delivery service in the world. In the world. What is even more impressive is that the drone centers, the, distribute, the drone centers are 100% manned by talented young Ghanaians, 100%. They are the flight operators and everything. And it is really a sight to behold when you see them in action. Many lives have been saved as a result of medical drones. Interestingly, the U.S. government has only recently contracted Zipline to also start delivery of medical supplies by drones in the United States after Ghana and Rwanda have taken the lead. Leveraging on the National Digital Property Address System, Zipline is also set to begin delivery of medicines to homes by the end of this year. For the bed, because there are certain patients who are bedridden. They cannot leave home. They may not have any help. Some patients may be cut off by floods, but because of the digital property address system, Zipline is now able to deliver and drop your medicine right in your home, not only in the hospital. And that service will start before the end of this year. And this will be the first such home delivery by drones of medical supplies anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world. Then we wanted to digitize the pharmacies, the e-pharmacy. Ladies and gentlemen, 
patients or people generally face difficulties when trying to find medicines in pharmacies. They have no way of knowing which pharmacies have the drugs before they go. They could go to five pharmacies before they are lucky of finding the drugs. Sometimes patients are directed to go to specific pharmacies to buy the medicine, denying them any advantage they may be from choosing a lower price shop. People also don't know what the prices of the medicine at the different pharmacies are. And they are, in their time of vulnerability, they are just happy to pay whatever is asked at the pharmacy where they find the drug. It is also difficult to tell whether the medicines are genuine or fake. And there's also a drug abuse with uh, drugs such as uh, prescription drugs such as tramadol. To address this problem, government challenged the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana to digitalize the operations of pharmacies in Ghana. Following this and working with the Pharmacy Council in collaboration with the private sector, I'm glad to say that we, that we have completed work on a digital platform for all pharmacies in Ghana. And currently, the pilot of 45 pharmacies is taking place. And basically, the e-pharmacy platform will offer the opportunity for everyone through a mobile phone to upload your prescriptions and find out which pharmacies near you have the medicines. Secondly, you can compare the prices of the same drug offered by different pharmacies. You can sit in your home, choose the pharmacy you want to buy the drug from, order it, pay for it, and it will be delivered in your home without you visiting the pharmacy. The e-pharmacy will also help us address the problem of drug abuse. Those who are prescribed the medicines, controlled medicines like tramadol, for example, will no longer receive a paper prescription. They will be sent a one-time code via SMS. And once the prescription is uploaded, and it will be used only once at the pharmacies. Thankfully, the e-pharmacy will be launched before the end of this year. And this will make Ghana, I'm so proud of this, this will make Ghana the first country in sub-Saharan Africa to have a national scale e-pharmacy and only one of the few countries in the world with a national scale e-pharmacy. I would like to thank the Pharmacy Council, the Ghanaian private partners for being very proactive in meeting the deadlines we have set them. Now to the education sector. To make our education sector, to make sure our education sector